Good afternoon, televiewers of Seven News Television. Thanks for being there and watching this program known as Expert. This is another edition, and I know you love it. What we should understand in the world we are living in is that nothing is free. Everything costs something at the end of the day. Therefore, creating wealth has a price to pay. Many are those who want to have fame, prestige, success, wealth, and money. They want to have popularity and improving lifestyle, but yet unwilling to pay the price or sacrifice something in order to get to that point. Many are those who are involved in different activities, some even join secret societies because they want to make wealth without knowing that there is a way that seems good unto man, but at the end leads to destruction. Viewers of Seven News, today we're going to talk of how to create wealth without any stress. I tell you the truth. You're going to enjoy it. With us today is Mr. Erika Lindu, the founder of School of Wealth Creation. He's going to tell us more about that. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Bisong, and good afternoon to all the viewers of uh, Seven News. It is a great privi privilege and a great honor for me to answer again your call. You know, anytime I'm called by Seven News, I'm always very happy. And I believe the few hours or few minutes we are going to spend together will allow televiewers to get one or two points that will really enable them to understand what is called wealth creation. Yes, Mr. Erika Lindu, today we are talking about wealth creation without stress. Who is Erika Lindu? Is he a pastor? Is he a business man? Is he a business bad pastor? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are really making your question very funny, but Erika Lindo is, uh, though, I, you know, my own comprehension of being a pastor is quite totally different with what people believe. Uh, I am not the kind of people that believe that uh, pastors are only the people that preaches in churches mm -hmm. or whatsoever. No, I believe strongly that uh, a pastor is first of all somebody that has the heart for people yeah. so that's why you can see doctors that are pastor you can see pilot that are pastor you can see by salam that are pastor you can see in all the society people that are pastor so when you're asking me if i'm a pastor looking at your religious point of view i will say no because people believe that pastor are the people preaching in church yeah. but looking to my own understanding of being a pastor i'm a pastor yeah. because i have heart for people raising people for financial freedom is a very big task that only somebody that has heart for people who really enjoy it so in that sense maybe i'm a pastor but i can fully say i'm a businessman because i'm fully involved in the business world okay. and i have many many activities you ask me who is erika lindu erika lindu is a businessman erika lindu is an author i'm writing books and one of the famous books that that is a bestseller on the market is the one i wrote since 2009 how to start your business without money is possible okay. uh, who is erika lindu erika lindu is the general manager of tlb communication a company that does in printing uh, computing computer and embroidery so who is erika lindu erika lindu is the founder of the school of wealth creation a school that has been set up in order to train people to create world who is erika lindu erika lindu is the promoter of the well-known uh, platform that many people know um, before it used to be called christian entrepreneurship days but since last year it is now called ethical entrepreneurship days because most of the time people were believing that that platform is only made for christian no on which it is a platform that is made to empower the maximum people cameroonian and all african so that they should be able to live uh, financial freedom who is erika lindo in fact when we'll be talking we'll go back again to some of the points that will enable our televiewer to know about erika lindo you have so many caskets yeah of today, course today we are talking about creating wealth without stress mr erika lindo 
How can one create wealth without being troubled? Okay, when they say creating wealth without stress, stress yeah. yeah, it can be, it's sometime in French, they will say it's utopic. I remember when I wrote the book, uh, when I wrote my book, uh, how uh, starting your business without money is possible. Many people were very angry to hear such kind of utopic title, uh, but I told them that it is possible. So it is almost in the same sense, uh, creating wealth without, without stress. So the first thing we need to understand is to define <coughs> what is wealth about. Yeah. You know, the problem with our society is that people don't first of all know the difference between wealth and money. money yeah. That's a problem. So as and you know, when you don't understand the purpose of a thing, you might not be able to make a good use. So as long as somebody doesn't know what is wealth and what is money, it will be difficult for him to even understand what is wealth. So now let me simply say, I'll give a definition that even big economists might not be able to say concerning wealth. Because if you go to the dictionary, you listen at very big, big economists, they will not give such, uh, such a definition. As for me, I strongly believe that what is called wealth is an energy, is a latent potential yeah. that can be converted <clears throat> to bring solution or to answer needs for mankind. You understand that? It is a very simple definition of wealth, but that gives a lot of understanding that can really help somebody. Wealth is an energy that can be converted. Wealth is a latent potential that can be converted in order to answer the need of my uh, humankind. You understand the thing? Yeah. So now, secondly, <clears throat> when we talk of money, money is nothing just than a means of exchange. Now, so when you see people running after money, it's because money is just paper. It's a paper or a coin. Oh, yeah. But the, 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 the functionality of that paper, of that coin, is just to give a value yeah. to, to, to a good yeah. or a service or, or a product. Yeah. So if you are running after money, you are making a very big mistake. Because that money, you know, in those days, there were no money. People were using what they say, truck. So when you have, you are, after farming, you take your goods, if it is banana and you are going to town and you need, um, you need cook cassava, yeah. when you go there, you give your own and take the other one. Yeah. So you people will be exchanging. It is later on that they discover that sometimes you go with banana and everybody at the market has banana. banana. So they decide now to put a means of exchange, exchange that yeah. will be giving the value right. of a product of a service. That is when money came out. So if somebody is looking for money, he has not understood anything. We should be looking for the value, that valuable product or services that answering a need. That is wealth. Yeah. Now money comes in just as a means of exchange. You understand that when you have that understanding of things, you can easily understand this song, as I used to tell students, that everybody is wealthy. It's just that people don't know. Because uh, when you understand that, um, money is an energy you can see that somebody that has just human strength yeah. is wealthy it because he can convert that energy, energy into money, money. Uh, so that is what I can say as for now <laughs> <Mr. Bissau. laughs> you sound very interesting uh, uh, Mr. Erika you are talking about money and, uh, and uh, wealth so is saving money in the bank making a man really wealthy <laughs> I will shock you, Mr. Bison. I will really shock you by saying that um, a saving money in the bank yeah. is for lazy people. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. People that save money into bank are really very lazy people. I wanted to quote a biblical text but i see that if i put it it might bring people just in the religious background yeah. but let me tell you because um, uh, you know in the uh, we, we, uh, in the business world when people want to create wealth it is no i used to say saving saving mm. is putting money aside yeah for a uh, uh, to, to, for a uh, future use, future use. Yeah. that is saving. That's saving, yeah. So if they take it like that, saving, saving is good. 
but in african mentality saving for people is just to be keeping money <laughs> keeping money and say that at least i have one million in my account i have 12 million i have no saving as in the business world only mean putting money aside just for future use yeah and now later on or put your money aside for investment because normally money is not just meant to be kept money is meant to for production yeah. to be used not used by buying any kind of thing but money is meant to be to, to, to multiply uh -huh. the use of money is that you always have to duplicate it to duplicate it that's why one of the secret of the wealthy people is that whenever you see that they don't spend money they don't spend what they have in hand they produce it when he multiplies they use the extra, extra yeah that is the extra so uh saving money is not really the best because um, when you are saving money the people that you are making rich at the bank yeah. because they are using your money and uh, dealing with it but not even only the the, the 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 bank but let me tell you the truth when you are saving money you are really helping the wealthy people because <laughs> rich people i'm very i'm very sorry to say it but rich people if you go to the bank and you ask people that are really indebted that have a lot of debt are rich people why because they understand one law of the money one law of the money to make people rich is that they will use the money of other people to become very rich so a rich man will go to the bank even if he has his saving he will not use it he will instead borrow the money that poor people are saving he use it to go very far so a saving money is not really the best money is made to be duplicated money is made to be used and turned thank you okay we're talking about creating wealth without stress yeah so what habits should an individual cultivate in order that he should be wealthy uh, yeah since we are talking about uh, creating wealth without money i said in the beginning that the first thing to know is to have the real definition of wealth yeah so if we want now to talk about practical steps yeah. or habitude that can help someone mm. to create wealth yeah, without yeah. stress right. so that we should enter into details i can quote two three four five points that can enable somebody to create wealth without stress the first thing according to the definition i gave to wealth is that a latent a latent potential or an energy mm. that can be converted, converted. to answer uh, people's mm -hmm. needs yeah. so if we take it like that the first habitude uh, uh someone need to develop if you want to create a wealth without stress the first thing someone need to do is to know about who he is yeah. and who what he has that's the first thing Good. that's the first thing because as i say at the beginning everybody is wealthy is everybody <laughs> there is nobody that is not wealthy on earth nobody everybody is wealthy but the only problem with people is that most of the time they appreciate what other That's people have mm. or anytime you appreciate what another person has you are killing and devaluing what you have yeah. so the first thing to do is to know who you have secondly to know what you have yeah. let me tell you for instance you can see some people that are gifted in one area maybe you see people that are gifted in the area of sport but what is killing most of the time african is the mentality of civil servant we have yeah, yeah. that makes people to believe that having a matricule is succeeding in life so because of that mentality people don't understand that the 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 the, 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 the potential they have in them is a seed of wealthiness so when you understand wealth you understand that anything you have in you must be converted i always define entrepreneurship or creating wealth just as the process of conversion the process of conversion when you understand the process of conversion you understand that if you want to be wealthy you can use one of the wealth that is time yeah. you convert time into money. money when you understand the process of conversion you understand that you can convert the potential you have into money when you understand that uh, wealth has everything to do with uh, uh, with conversion you can convert work work into money 
when you understand the process of conversion you can convert space when i'm talking of space is uh, um, natural resources it is uh, sea it is mountain it is leave anything in the space you can convert it so that's why you see natural doctor for instance they take leaves they convert it into product and they are Actually, selling yeah. eh? so when you understand the process of uh, conversion you understand that anybody can become wealthy we wealthy if you understand that to become wealthy you need to understand the process of conversion because to become wealthy has everything to do with the the principle of conversion uh -huh. you should see the potential the talent you have and to convert it into a product or a service because the source of money is product, product. or service meanwhile the source of wealth is god god gives wealth yeah but now if you are looking for money you should understand that in order to have money you should develop a product or a service if you want money you should be able to convert wealth into a product or a service in order to have money so that was the first thing uh, the second thing now how to convert money without stress you can that is i i always say to people there is one cheap method to be able to create wealth without money so it's just is it? is to play the middleman <laughs> to play the middleman excuse me what do you mean by playing the middleman? playing the middleman means you look at where there is a need uh -huh. you look at how to answer the need you put yourself at the middle yeah. you put yourself in between without any money you just put the two people in contact and you take your commission your that's all that is all without stress who will tell me on this uh, bison that he doesn't have a father an uncle an aunt that is having a shop maybe selling uh, jewelry maybe selling dresses maybe selling uh, shoes maybe selling bag or whatever just look for people okay for instance uh, be song i am a print i am a printer by profession i have a printing press you only need to look at somebody that is looking for a complimentary card uh, or yeah. invitation you just tell him that oh I can provide for you now you come to me you say please i have somebody that is looking for print uh, um, for 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 for, for card. Print card yeah you want to print card how can you do for me i tell you i will do for you for ten thousand you go to the person you say i used to do it for fifteen thousand sir uh, so you work it you come i produce for you you go there you sell for you give it to fifteen thousand and you have your five thousand that is how to play the middleman and it is very simple okay mr Erica, very simple mr Erica, mr Erica, i'll come back to you 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 sound very interesting <laughs> tell you was he's a teacher <laughs> from what he said yeah he's a teacher you can make wealth without stress of course before we continue with him i would like you to listen to this excerpt kept by roland amana talking before of uh, Christian entrepreneurship days but you can discover that today we are talking of ethical entrepreneurship days so the first change is the name because we have make it to be inclusive you know before people were thinking that it is for Christian on which what we were communicating were value value ethical value so we see that because of the name many people were believing that it is made for a category a group of people on which our aim is fight is to fight against poverty and unemployment so the first thing that is uh, uh, as a change uh, is the name that has changed then secondly is for the first time that we have all the speaker the facilitator we have you can see the lineup we have almost 13 tycoon of entrepreneurship it is not easy to have such people are coming from ivory coast other people are coming from usa other people you have seen general managers that are coming people that doesn't have time but because of check they are coming so i can say those are really if you the, have a message to pass out today what is the message a message that i can pass today is that it's better for each one to understand that he need to be the change he want to see in the community anything you do in life don't criticize but what you see as a problem position yourself as a solution that is what i can say oh thank you very much Roland and Mana, for that except uh, ladies and gentlemen and viewers of several news television don't forget we are talking about creating wealth without stress 
Eric Alindo, the founder of School of Wealth Creation, was telling us something. He was on the second point. Just get to the third point. So, Mr. Erika, yeah, the yeah. second point was acting as a middleman. Yeah. So, now, what is the third point? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we say that someone can play the middleman. And uh, as I was saying, that is one of the most easiest way to become wealthy without stress. Okay. Most easiest way. And let me conclude before I take the third, the third point. Yeah. You know, most of the time, people are just very, I don't want to use the word septic, but people are just, I don't want also to use the word dull. It will be like I am really insulting, insulting people. Yeah. But people don't use their mind to think. That's all. And let me tell the televiewer that all the business in the world is based on the middleman middleman principle okay let me tell you some uh, some example if you see a traveling agency you might be saying that whoa i don't know how can i do to to have a traveling agency you need a lot of money there is no money there the only thing they are doing is that if you want to fly with ethiopian airway you will go at Ethiopia Airway and buy their ticket. Yeah. If you want to fly with Emirate, you go to Emirate and buy. Yeah, so traveling agency, what they do is that they come in one, they just open a shop, yeah. and they take contact with all the traveling agency, Ethiopia, Belgium, Air France, Cameco, everybody. They just when you comes now, they tell you if you want to go with Cameco, this is more. Ta, ta, ta. If you want to go with Belgium, Air France, that that they sell. And at the end of the month, they go. To any agency and say I've sell I've sold twenty of your ticket. Give a percentage. I've sold. You see now. So people yeah. will be thinking that traveling agency is a very big money, money yeah. business that need a lot of money. No, they are just playing the middleman. Even the big 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 shops or uh, big big uh, I don't want to quote the name. This big big shop you are seeing in town. Let me tell you, it is not that the byproduct to be selling no it is fake yeah. they are just playing middleman the only thing they are doing is that they open the shop yeah. when they open the shop they fold their hand they know that brasserie will come they know that people selling food will come they know that people supplying sugar and will come uh, they know that people selling yogurt they will come and say please we want you to sell our product in this shop okay. what do we do they will tell you that please we don't need your product but if you want give us your product we sell it and every month you come we make all the financial statement and pay you do you know so they are running their businesses with other people's money yeah. so the middleman is one of the easiest principle that can make someone to become wealthy stress free Great. now let us go back to the let's go to the third point <laughs> let's go to the third point the third point is uh, how to become wealthy without stress, without stress. is uh, to make yourself available okay. to work freely yeah. for someone that his today represent your that desired work. future. Yeah. I know when I will say it, people will say, what does he mean? What does he mean? <laughs> you know, one time I was teaching to students and I told them, most of you that want, that are looking for work, looking for work and uh, do you want me to give you one medicine that can enable you in less than 24 hours to have a job people were surprised students say tell us you have been saying things but this time we are going to trap you tell us what can we do i said it is very simple just take a paper and write on it that i am looking for a job where i will not be earning any salary when you drop that application before you go and take your taxi your phone will ring they will say come and start that is it yeah the problem is that most of us most of young people when they, they don't they don't look at what they can become through an opportunity, opportunity yeah. they are only looking at what they can earn or what they can gain yeah. through that opportunity You're right but let me the, let me tell you the truth when, when people are studying today they have master degree they have a phd they have a, a degree but for instance you have a, a degree or you have a master in anthropology now my company what will make me to give you a job, a job? Yeah. because what you are doing i am a technician it cannot bring any value to my company but now you can go and serve there free but now the advantage is that the first advantage is that you will discover that you are going to learn yes. a know-how 
free of charge free of charge because while being there you will see how the other people are doing you will be trained yeah. now the second advantage that most of people don't know is that in every company on the world there is a human resources department whereby you have thousands of applications thousands of applications so when you are offering your service free of charge in a company and you are enjoying and you are learning a job i want to tell you the truth the next time they will be looking for somebody to employ they will not go to human resources yeah, yeah, they will just wrong. say at least this man has been with us for, for two time. years for three years let us just put it and that is how you are going to have an opportunity working there but second time you must have learned and know how that in school you are not you are able, not able to, to have it, it. Yeah. yeah because you know sometimes when i give my testimony people are very embarrassed and before i become uh, what i am today be song at the year of 17 i have the concours of saint in france i was to be a pilot but i refused because within me i i had never thought of becoming a pilot. I, yeah, to be, to become a pilot i did it i did the concours because my parent my par, my, my, my father was a colonel in army very big so you know every parent want his child to take over so yeah. when i succeed at that year of 17 all my family were happy everybody knew that that is the person that who took over my father but I, when they call us to send us in france i refused it was a very great deception for my entire family but i just refused because within me i knew i am called to be a businessman not to be in an office i knew it yeah. so and when i refused like that to be honest my family abandoned me nobody wanted to understand again that i'm a member of the family but do you know what i did i had to go and put myself under somebody that was having a bookshop yeah. i worked for him free of charge almost for two years until one day he told me erica where well, uh, since you enter in my business i've been making money as from today i'll be giving you a monthly salary let me tell you how much he will pay he will pay me in this year only twelve thousand every month but i was not there looking for the salary i was there learning yeah. how to handle a bookshop and do you know what the first business i ever did in my life was to open a bookshop book after it is from that bookshop that i've been growing 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 and let me tell you the truth where i am today is not anything of where i am going but one thing is sure i am no more where i was yesterday <laughs> and i know i am on the process so that was the third point okay the let's go to point. the four points now if we want to go to the fourth point mr bison the fourth point how to create uh, wealth, wealth without stress without stress mm -hmm. is to not to despise the little beginning, beginning. Mm. yeah that is the most difficult point because you know we are in the very demanding society whereby everybody is dreaming to have a big car to have a, to have a, to have a, everybody dreams to, to to start big but they forgot something that if you want to become wealthy in the business world you need to start small mm. that is a natural principle let me shock some viewer do you know that god himself at a certain point he failed because he wanted to start big uh, i know i'm shocking already. Yeah, yeah 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 that's shocking he failed how he failed because he started with adam adam the first day was already a man he was having teeth he was already walking and eating and adam failed that is why when he started afresh with the second adam that is jesus the bible makes us to understand in luke 2 52 that he was a baby he entered in the room and he was growing in grace in stature in front of people and in front of god so god knew him by himself that he has failed because at first he wanted to start big he understood that the principle he understood that he broke his own principle so now when he wanted to redeem the world he has now to start with the seed somebody that comes in the womb and that will come as a baby and that will be growing and you know very well that jesus did exploit so never you despise little beginning everything that is big today yesterday was small that is a life principle mm. even if you see a tree that is 17 years today at the point it was just a seed, seed yeah. the problem is that many people don't have a, a, a look of a seed mm. last time i took um, a seed of a um, ground up and i show people i say what are you looking everybody was saying we are seeing a seed of ground up we are seeing a seed of ground up i told them you are looking at the seed of ground up but me i'm looking containers of ground up yeah. that are exported 
I'm looking container of oil that can satisfy the need of all the Cameroonians. Mm. You know why? Because of the point of view. So when you understand that everything in life starts with a seed mm. and we have the responsibility to work that seed so that it should grow, we will understand that if we want to become wealthy tomorrow, it is good today to start small. small. That is That was the number four point. You said five points, so <coughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, we can go up to ten points, but we'll stop at five. Okay. So the number six point, if you want to, if you want to to create wealth without without stress, is to learn mm -hmm. how to convert your potential yeah. into money. Mm -hmm. You need to learn. For instance, I told you that wealth is uh, energy. Wealth. Is a latent potential that need to be converted yeah. into money. Yeah. So when you understand that, you can see that now somebody like me. I told you that when I refused to go to France, Sensi, it was a very big shock for my family and everything. But when I discover what is the meaning of wealth, mm. and I now went within me to look at what are my gifts. What are the gifts I have in me? A uh, big song. I knew that one of the gifts that God gave me before sending me on earth was the gift of speaking and communicating. <laughs> so now I had to think now how can I convert a speaking gift into money? Mm. I had to train myself in entrepreneurship. After training myself in entrepreneurship, I opened a school, school of wealth creation, whereby people that are coming. They are not coming to buy goods. They are just coming to listen how I talk. They pay money just to, to listen and talk. So that is how, while paying their money, I am converting my gift of speaking into money. So anybody has that potential. So the number fit is look at within you. What is that seed you have in you? And to know it, you just have to, to ask uh, some question within yourself. What do you love to do even if they don't pay you? Those are some indicators that can show you the area of your gift. What are the things that are making you not to sleep in the night? Yeah. You are ready to do it and when you are doing it, you are enjoying it. Another question is, what are you ready to do if they tell you from the beginning that you will never fail? Yeah. What are you ready to do? Another thing is, uh, uh, if you had all the gold yeah. of this world, what would you like to do? Let me tell you, viewer, if you see something that if they give you all the gold you are ready to do, just put it the other side. Do that thing and you have all the gold of the world. So that was the feed point. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalindo. <laughs> yeah, you are the founder grateful. of School of Wealth Creation. School of Wealth Creation. Viewers of 7 News Television, Christian Isimi has to tell us on how the government has been trying its best to ensure that Cameroonians gain employment but is this succeeding or failing, Christian Esemi? C'est un des nombreux programmes logés au sein du ministère de l'Agriculture, autour duquel beaucoup d'espoir avait été placé par les gouvernants en place pour solutionner une bonne partie des problèmes d'emploi au Cameroun. Depuis 2015, en effet, date de sa mise en orbite, le programme de promotion de l'emploi des jeunes en abrégé peu et à jeunes semble briller par une opacité dans la réalisation de ses objectifs, au point où l'on en vient à questionner la philosophie qui y est définie pour porter au loin ses prétentions. En l'absence d'une meilleure visibilité du programme, l'on constate plutôt chaque année de façon répétitive que plus se tiennent ces sessions de travail, comme ce fut le cas il y a encore quelques jours à Yaoundé, meilleur demeure. La confusion autour de ce projet est bien plus aggrave l'indifférence des jeunes. Côté pilotage du projet, pas de soucis cependant. Le PRJ ne s'intéresse pas seulement aux maillons production. Le PRJ s'intéresse à tous les maillons qu'on peut développer le long de la chaîne des valeurs, les dix filières ciblées, c'est-à-dire les services en passant par la production, la transformation et la commercialisation. Des mots, juste des mots donc, qui n'ont de sens parfois que pour ceux qui les prononcent. Car sur le terrain, la réalité commande un discours concret. Pas une seule fois, en effet, que les responsables de ce programme se soient livrés à un exercice d'explication au grand public 
pour indiquer leur positionnement, préciser leur zone d'intervention et surtout les mécanismes de sa saisine. À ce jour, combien de jeunes pour qui le projet avait pourtant été initié peuvent vous parler avec précision du PA jeune Combien sont-ils à pouvoir simplement vous indiquer le lieu où siège ce programme à Yaoundé Presque pas un seul. Quel sens donner dès lors à ce qui tient lieu des résultats qu'on présente chaque jour avec beaucoup d'élégance au public Grande question pour petite réponse. Trois catégories de jeunes sont éligibles au PA jeune. La première catégorie, c'est les jeunes en situation post-primaire, diplômés ou pas. La seule condition, c'est de savoir lire et écrire l'une des deux langues officielles. Mais la condition ici pour la catégorie 1, c'est que ces jeunes doivent être nantis du savoir-faire. C'est-à-dire, c'est ces jeunes qui sont déjà impliqués dans les activités. Ce sont les acteurs qui participent, qui connaissent l'activité agro-pastorale, mais qui ne sont pas des diplômés. La deuxième catégorie de jeunes, c'est les jeunes diplômés de l'enseignement supérieur qui veulent s'investir dans le secteur agro-pastoral. Et enfin, la troisième catégorie, ce sont ces jeunes qui ont déjà créé leur entreprise, mais qui ont besoin de développement. Cela ne fait donc aucun doute à personne. Trois années après sa mise en place, le PA jeune n'a en réalité pas encore décollé du tout. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers of Seven News Television, we are here talking about School of Wealth Creation on how to create wealth without stress. It's Christian Esimi, thanks very much. We are here with Mr. Erika Lindo, the founder of School of Wealth Creation. Mr. Lindo, can one really make wealth without money? Uh, Mr. Bisson, I think that uh, after just developing the five point I did, I told you that if we want to go, we can go deep and go deeper. But I strongly believe that only the five point we have developed now is making any human being to understand that it is possible to create wealth without money or without stress. And I want to say that that is one of the things that lead me to set up a place because many times when people hear about school of wealth creation i am the one who created who found the school of wealth creation because i understood that uh, cameroonians are facing a lot of challenge uh, challenges one of the great challenges is that people that did not go to school were just believing in that they are the left out yeah. secondly uh, people that went to school having diploma were frustrated because they could not find the job thirdly there are people that could not even succeed their education and they were believing that everything is finished for them so it come to my mind that uh, you know because i always tell people that entrepreneurship is all about answering people need you are called an entrepreneur whenever you are able to develop a solution that is a product or uh, a service that will answer a need so when i look at the society and I look at all those things and I saw also that our education system is killing the genius yeah. within everybody I now had to set up another thing that will bring the balance that will make people even if you have not gone to school to be able to understand that though you have not gone to school but you are worthy because yeah. there are things within you that you can convert so because of that I had to put in place school of wealth creation whereby i am training with uh, some of the teacher that has been trained also training people into entrepreneurship never you forget um be some when people want to become medical doctor they go to quiz in yeah. cameroon yeah. they go to university of montagne or whatsoever if they want to become engineer they go to école de travaux they go to polytech if they want to become officer they go to emia if they want to uh, become police people they go to mutengene yeah. if they want to become that, that that we can quote it if they want to become teacher they go to ens yes. if they want to but now where are they training people that want to become business people that want to create wealth that's why most of the time i say one of the failure of the education system classic education system is that uh, the education system cannot help anybody to become wealthy that's true that's why you see people that have big big diploma but they cannot create wealth. sometimes you even see big big economists yeah big big shattered accountant 
their work is just to account the business of people, yeah, but they themselves. Because a classic educational system does not make someone to wow. create wealth. That is why we created that school, school of wealth creation, to be able to train people so that at the end they become entrepreneurs. Because most of the time, people believe that people are born entrepreneurs. No, you become an entrepreneur when you understand how it goes. And I want to be very grateful because uh, due to that school of wealth creation, and also to the platform of uh, uh, ethical entrepreneurship day yeah. we saw last for the past uh, the 9th of february during the the the, the youth week the minister of uh, youth affair and yeah. education civic gave us this this award you can see the award the diploma for youth excellence diploma of youth excellence with this award okay. as an organ an organization that is really working and helping the government to fight against unemployment and poverty yes so can you can you can you in a way show give show your viewers the awards the award yeah yes, this is the certificate yeah this is a certificate okay and this is the award yeah we receive it from the hands of the minister of uh, uh, youth affairs and the civic education that gave it to jack because they discover really that what we are doing as work is really empowering uh, our community so i can just answer by saying that it is possible it is really possible and possible to create wealth without money without money and without stress mr eric i want us to talk about how can one create wealth and maintain the wealth at the same time yeah you know as uh, you are saying creating wealth so, yeah it's one thing it's one thing maintaining now is it's another right. thing mm -hmm. now to maintain you need permanent development okay permanent development because that's why i always tell people that there is a difference between a bayam salam and an entrepreneur yeah yeah uh -huh. well, because sometimes people just believe that i'm a bayam salam i am a i am a trader but you are not an entrepreneur uh -huh. You can be a, a, a trader, you can be a buyer, salam, but you will be very limited. Your life will only go from hand to mouth every day, from hand to mouth. But now we need to understand that success comes from within and affect the outside. That is one point. We need to understand that our level of performance in life mm. is related to our level of understanding Understand. and knowledge yeah that's the truth the two are linked that is why people that rule and reign in life are people that master knowledge yeah. so if you are just trading or if you are just doing buy and salam you'll be living from hand to mouth so the second thing you need to do when you are already a trader or when you are already a buyer salam is now to empower yourself yeah. by attending seminars mm. by reading books by going over internet and looking at uh, uh, success stories and looking for people that have gone ahead of you or that are doing the same thing you are doing and you try to see what they have applied you you upgrade your knowledge yeah, yeah. as you are upgrading yourself you are going to see that you will be growing and by growing it will enable you to develop your activity and to maintain yourself in business why because everybody die anytime you start you stop learning yeah, anytime you stop improving yourself developing yourself you just know that you are a dead man <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much so for how long has this school of wealth creation uh, existed in cameroon school of wealth creation started since uh, 2003 yeah 2003 but you know it was in phases just as i was telling you uh, anything big we start small yeah 2003 we had to work it out to work it out even in 2010 we had to stop it yeah we had to stop it to rethink the project, project yeah. we knew that it is answering a need but the how to we did not get it so when we tried to make a bilan we saw that after three years uh, we tried to analyze our mistake and what we we're not doing that were not good so we work on it before we start it afresh so i can really say that it is since three years now that we are really operating in the way we wanted it and we like it and uh, last year the the, the 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 demand was so strong 
until we had to open a branch of the school of world creation in Douala yeah. because as so far we were just in Yaoundé so we had to open a branch in Douala and right now we have demand in the northern part of Cameroon we have demand in Congo we have demand in Gabon we have demand in Central Africa Chad and in Ivory Coast so and as I'm talking right now people are following courses online okay yeah right now as I'm talking the last the last batch we started uh, meet mid uh, january we have one ivory coast woman that is following the courses she has registered and we are sending her audio courses so even people outside of Douala and yaounde now they are following the courses so that is what i can say about okay. school of world creation thanks very much mr Erika. viewers of seven news television you've heard from a teacher a mentor a professional you know a man with so many caskets don't forget Expert is your program. Kalis follows people, the youth especially, who are trying to make life out of private businesses. We must understand that the state alone cannot employ everybody. Kalis, let's get your report. Le Cameroun est confronté au problème de l'emploi des jeunes. Et l'entrepreneuriat se positionne comme étant une opportunité pour les jeunes qui veulent s'insérer dans la vie active. Pour soutenir ce secteur, le gouvernement camerounais a octroyé la somme de 102 milliards de francs CFA en guise de plan spécial triennal pour la jeunesse. A cet effet, plusieurs structures ont été mises en place à l'instar du programme d'appui aux jeunes ruraux pour la lutte contre la pauvreté, page ULP et bien d'autres. Le CIGE est un projet initié il y a quelques années par l'Association Camerounaise pour le Développement Rural Acadien. Créée en 2005, cette association a pour mission de promouvoir le développement durable en milieu jeune ainsi que, ainsi que les activités socio-éducatives, sportives et culturelles, d'informer et d'appuyer les jeunes sur les différentes opportunités de développement qui s'offrent à eux. Le constat est clair, la question de l'entrepreneuriat jeune nécessite bien plus que de simples réformes et des salons à eux dédiés. La grande doléance est d'intégrer ce, ce grand rendez-vous mondial de la jeunesse euh, dans euh, le budget de l'État, parce que la jeunesse n'a pas de moyens pour pouvoir organiser un tel événement. Il faut un réel appui financier, matériel et même technique pour organiser. Nous pouvons avoir des initiatives, mais nous n'avons pas la science nécessaire et les finances nécessaires pour pouvoir or, 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 les mettre en œuvre. Malgré les efforts de l'État et ses tentatives pour apporter des réponses dans l'entrepreneuriat, le chômage des jeunes est estimé aujourd'hui à plus de 50% au Cameroun. Pour pallier à cet état de choses, les jeunes n'ont pas d'autre choix que de se lancer dans le secteur informé. Thanks very much, Kalis, for that report. Televiewers of Seven News Television, we are going closer to the end of this program. We will have with us Mr. Erika Lindo, who is the founder of the School of Wealth Creation in Cameroon. Mr. Eric Alinu, yeah, Mr. Bison. we are talking of creating world without stress. Yeah. So what is the price that somebody has to pay in order to create wealth? <laughs> that is another very big deal, a very, very tough question. It's look, it seems very easy, but very, very difficult yeah. because uh, most of the time, unfortunately, we are in a country whereby uh, many people uh want to have everything yeah. without paying anything okay. it is very difficult and uh, you can see also uh one of the things that always pain me is that you see a lot of churches a lot of religious uh, uh, gathering that uh, uh, people gather there but they don't teach them principle mm. they only teach them that uh, a prophetic word to make things happen Apple. it make me very sad yeah if those things were working we would have seen result yeah that's so true. if there is no result that means it it's doesn't work yeah. yeah because god himself has put principles. principles but unfortunately in africa religious leaders have made a lot of people to believe that we need to live 
98% in the base of miracle and 2% in the base of principle, principles on which that is not is that how true? god did god has made the world in such a way that we need two miracles is in fact exception yeah. and what is miracle even miracle means i've i've exhausted all what i could do before god take over so that's why god has made the world in such a way that we need to live two percent in the base of miracle, miracle and 98 percent in the base of principle principles. because life is just as i used to say echo you know there is a father one day that was walking with a little his little child they went on the mountain and as they were crossing the little child were crying hello when he put uh, off his mouth he will listen hello coming back so he asked his father that daddy i don't know what is happening it's like somebody is speaking after me what is happening the father turned to the junior to his son and he says son yeah. many people call it echo Keiko. but me i call it life because life will always give you back, back. what you have put in okay. so there is no way you can succeed without paying a price to create wealth there is a price to pay yeah. and you can always see that anything that are uh, things that are common are of no value yeah. that is why if you want to buy a truck a truck of uh, la, la terre is what um, soil soil yeah. they will sell you very cheap but now if you want a truck of uh, sand, sand <laughs> now the value goes, goes up, up. Yeah. now if you want the truck of gold, gold yeah. the goes again if you want a truck of diamond it, it double up, yeah. why because anything of value has a price, a price to, to pay. pay so if you want to create wealth and you want to become a successful businessman let me tell you the truth prepare yourself to pay the price you cannot know if you discuss with bill gates you discuss with all the wealthy people and they tell you their schedule when how they are going late in the night and wake, waking up okay. early in the morning why would i even call those people myself in front of you if you try to work with me during two days i'm sure you will fall sick why there is a price to pay for success thank you very much okay any last words to our viewers mr erica last word is that i want to tell as i used to tell people uh i am one of the people that doesn't wait the change that will come from the state though they are doing their part they are only doing what they can do mm. but we need to understand as african mostly we have the responsibility to build our continent yeah. let us not ask and wait what the government will do with for us but we should ask ourselves what am i doing for my country what am i doing for my continent so all of us let's rise and everybody should play his part if you cannot help a thousand people as mother teresa say look for one people help that person develop your country and i'm sure africa will be a place whereby people will be looking visa to come into africa because of you and i thank you very much thanks very much mr eric alindo for accepting this invitation thank you i'm very very grateful and it's always with joy and pleasure whenever i'm called to be here at seven news ah. thanks ah tell viewers we must understand that everything that has a beginning definitely has an end we have come to the end of this program known as experts follow this program every tuesday and thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m I will not go away without appreciating my technical team. You have Atulet, you have people like Rulan Amana, you have people like Masia Kwakam, not forgetting the other one, Terry Ndamba. Your program is coming up, which is Club Elite Plus. And at 7 p.m., we have the news. Also at 8 p.m., we have the news. Thank you very much. You also have 7 News Television. We are there for you. Keep on watching 7 News. The only television and the unique one that deals with continuous in information without an end.